Hello Year 4. So, we're going to carry on with our um, poetry thing. Now last week we looked at rhyme, and of course, a rhyme is the repetition of similar sounds in two or more words. So let's just recap what we did last week. Look back to your book and the words that you wrote down, and look at the words that you paired it with to form a rhyme and pattern. Mine were hot and spot, camp and ramp, fan and tan, sun and fun, cat and tap, green and cream. Well done for those guys. Um, so today we are looking at alliteration. Alliteration. Well done. This is the use of a series of words beginning, beginning with the same consonant or sound. For example, busy, buzzing, the bee behave beautifully. Listen to these three sentences. What is the letter represented in each, um, repeated in each? Betty and Bob brought back blue balloons from the big bazaar. What was that letter, repeated letter? That's right, the B. This next one. Four furious friends fought for the phone. Mm, that one. Yeah, an F. And the final one. Sam shot shot short of his sock. You're right, an S. Well done, guys. So what can alliteration actually do to a sentence? Well, listen to these two, sentence, two sentences, and you decide which one you like the best. The first one is, the butterfly brushed past the bush. The second one is, the beautiful butterfly brushed briefly past the brambly bush. The second one, right? Yes, absolutely. Now, alliteration is a great way of adding some excitement to a sentence, and if what you're reading is exciting, you're more likely to remember it. So in poetry, alliteration can be used in just one or two sentences, like this one that I'm about to read to you. Fiery froth and witches brew, foamy froth and witches blue, fume and spoon and spoon drift spray, fizzle, quizzle, shout, hurrah, wash it sloshing, squashing, sloshing, hear it hissing, squishing, spitting, grandma, better start to pray. In this poem, from, if you remember, George's Marvellous Medicine, there were a couple of examples of alliteration. One of them was just a repeat of a word, um, of a letter in foamy froth. And the other one, the more notable one, was in this, um, the line where it says, watch it sloshing, swashing, sloshing. Now, there are poems that are absolutely jam-packed with alliteration. Full of it, and it had an interesting effect while trying to read these. Um, you might have heard of them as tongue twisters. So this is one that we all we all know. We've done it before in class as well. And I'll have a go, but as a tongue twister, they are pretty tricky. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where are the pickled peppers Peter Piper, Piper picked? Ah, I got uh, one try on that and I was all over the place. That was alliteration on almost every single word. It was quite busy. Have a go yourself. Google them. There are lots of different types of tongue twisters and they are really good fun as well. Get your parents to do them. So for today's task, I would like you to try it yourself. Come up with three alliteration sentences for each of the following. These words, these um, words are on your home learning booklet. So, and remember, not every word needs to be alliterated. So the three sentences are about the dog, the teacher, and the pupil. Have a load of fun with this, guys. I cannot wait to see them.